TMI guys, okay, this video is gonna have a lot of like too much information, so alert if you don't like TMI, just move along. And you can find one of my other videos linked below. Just better videos for people that are interested in birth stories. Hi guys, welcome back to Texas Family Life. My name is Christy, I am a mom of seven. I'm currently pregnant with twins, which makes it the seven. I have five here running around. And I first and foremost want to say an enormous, like overwhelming thank you for the support that you showed me in my last video. I announced to you guys that I was having twins and I received so many comments of y'all saying you're gonna pray for me and my family and the babies and the words of encouragement, all of you who have twins or are a twin or you know, no twins or just moms that you know, know what it's like to have kids at all. It was just such an encouragement. I did not expect that kind of response. Um, I, it has been the biggest blessing and I am more thankful than you know to have y'all as a community. I love being able to message with y'all back and forth and to just get some insight that I wouldn't get any other way other than having this YouTube channel and talking to y'all. So I do appreciate your comments and I thank you again from the bottom of my heart for all the love that you showed me. And it just, it just really makes me want to cry, but I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. But today I am going to share with you the birth story of my first baby, which if you're looking for like a positive birth story, this isn't necessarily for you, but I do recommend watching it because I wish I had seen something like this when I was pregnant with my first. I was a new mom. I had no knowledge. I, you know, did my research and I went to my classes and all the stuff that, you know, they, they request of you at the hospital and I didn't ask any questions. Um, I have learned and it's like, I don't know why it's such a hard pill to swallow, but my husband is always right. Like I know usually they say like the woman's always right, but in the long run, he's always been right. And especially with the big decisions, like I should have listened to him. So when we found out we were pregnant with my first baby, we were married six months when we got pregnant with her or so a little bit here or there. Um, and one of the first things he said was, I don't want you to have epidural because I've heard of risks and you know, there's so many things to it. And me back then I leaned more towards like being a feminist in the sense of like, I can make my own decisions. I'm the one having the baby. Like I don't want your input. And it caused the biggest fight. It made that first, you know, that first few months of marriage so rocky and like looking back, I should have listened. And it's just like ugh, so many things, but I'm going to get started now and I'll try not to make it too long, but it is a long story and stay tuned to find out what a cesarean section feels like. So I was 36 weeks with my first pregnancy. I had gained a lot of weight and that was, you know, number one, my doctor was never concerned with my weight gain. I went from, I think like 120 to one. 160 or 170 and she never asked me, you know, what kind of things I was eating. She didn't care about my nutrition, which is a huge, huge proponent of like a healthy pregnancy. The better you eat, the like, better chances you have for your body, like sticking it out and taking care of this other baby. So at 36 weeks, I began bleeding and it was like a lot in the toilet. I just went to the bathroom. There was no pain or anything. There was so much blood. So I was like, we have to go to the emergency room now. So we went and it was, you know, preterm labor going into labor like a week later would have been fine but to them they wanted it stopped so they gave me like medicine to stop the labor and they were telling me you know you're having contractions and whatnot so they gave me a shot for the baby's lungs to make sure if she did come out they were better developed and that was all fine and dandy so I ended up leaving the hospital and I didn't have the baby and we went home and we went along with our lives so about two to three weeks later, I think she was about a week early, they did a membrane membrane sweep and they, uh, they sent me into labor pretty quickly. So we go to the hospital. Oh, wait. Okay. So that was 36 weeks. So I started leaking um, fluid and I would know so I was leaking and I went into my doctor's and I was like, how do I know if uh, I'm leaking, you know, amniotic fluid? And she's like, you would know because you'd have a towel between your legs when you came in. And the first time mom, I'm like, okay, I guess I'm not leaking. She didn't test 
if you're new to being a mom, you can get tests for to see if you're leaking amniotic fluid. Because like if your water breaks, you go in and they're gonna automatically test you to see either you peed your pants or your water is leaking. So she didn't even test. Um, of course, you tell me as a new mom, if your water is leaking, you have a towel between your leg. I'm not gonna be like, well, I'm, I think I'm leaking, you know. And she was kind of a doctor that would mess with you, like being like, oh, you just wet your pants. And I was a very like shy and timid girl where if someone said that to me, I'd probably cry. <laughs> so, so I never like got it tested. She never tested it. Uh, that was it. And I think she had said that to me a couple times. I think my water was leaking for well over a week. And I ended up coming down with a fever when I went into labor. So I was already sick. I had like a cold. And now that's like a thing anyways, when I'm in labor is a lot of times I'm sick. So I don't know what that's about. But so I, we go to the hospital when I do go into labor and my water hadn't broken anything. I wasn't ready to go, but my mom was like, you need to go, you need to go. So we went to the hospital and I was in labor. I was already about four centimeters dilated. And so we go and I get there. I got there around, I think seven o'clock at night. And so we go in and they check me and everything. And I'm like, automatically, I want an epidural. Like, I, I don't wanna wait this out. I don't wanna feel anything. I just want an epidural. So. I was having the pain in my back, which is considered back labor, which is a telltale sign of a sunny side up baby. And I mean, you, your baby doesn't have to be sunny side up for you to have back labor, but it is a sign. So all the contractions were in my back and they were so painful. And so I got the epidural and it worked halfway. So it didn't work. It still hurt. And then I really couldn't move my legs. And so I kept like pressing the button because there's a button you can push to like get more epidural and it went empty and I was like, I need more. I was in labor until about, goodness, I don't know numbers. I'm so bad with numbers. Like I can't tell you how much my babies weighed. I can't tell you what time they were born. Maybe one day my mind will empty and I'll have room for that stuff. But so it was about 12 hours later. And so I'm starting to push the baby because I can feel her. I can feel that it's time to push and the doctor's like you can go ahead and push or the nurses let's let's remember this I haven't seen my doctor yet so I start pushing I tried everything I could pushing they did like this like silly tug of war thing where you hold the hold the towel and they pull it and that's supposed to like help you crunch up and uh, push the baby out quicker and all this they're like you know she has lots or the baby has lots of hair we always wait to find out the gender the baby has lots of hair you can see it and my husband looks and he's like looks like the baby's facing the wrong way. Like, it looks like she's facing up because babies come out facing the floor. Um, and the nurse is like, <coughs> I would know if the baby was facing sunny side up. I have delivered so many babies. Sorry if I said doctor again, nurse. The nurse was like, I would know. And, and we were like, okay. I pushed to no avail two hours. I pushed and I pushed and I pushed and I pushed. And you know, I thought it was gonna be this like quick thing, baby's gonna come out, and it was not. So finally, the doctor comes in and she says, yep, baby's sunny side up, like my husband had thought. And she's like, you're gonna have to have a C-section. She didn't do anything. She didn't try to help me get the baby out. She didn't, you know, try to turn the baby or anything like that. And I know that there are risks with that, but she didn't touch me. And she was just like, you need a C-section. And so, of course, I start bawling my eyes out because that's terrifying to me. <laughs> like a C-section? I want a big family. How do I have a big family with a C-section? And I knew, like, that if you have so many C-sections, they're going to start limiting you. And, like, lots of doctors can say, you know, you can only have a few C-sections. Then you've got to be done. Although I do know, for you that have had a C-section and you might be discouraged, you can have a V-back, virginal, virginal birth after a C-section. But also... I know moms have had six C-sections. Like it is all about how you're sewn up, how your scar is and like everything like that. Like it can be done, but I mean, there are gonna be a lot of doctors that tell you, no, I will not. So anyway, she says, you know, you're gonna get a C-section. She's like, don't worry about the scar. I'll make it nice and low so you can still wear your bikini. And you know, no one can tell that you have the scar and you'll still look really good. And like, I didn't care about all of that. I cared about babies and she's like, I said, so will I be able to have a vaginal birth after this? And she's like, no, never. And my heart sank because I knew, like, but I knew before I knew like, oh, 
heartbreaking moment, just heart wrenching because I was a first time mom. I didn't know any better. So they wheel me in to the OR to give me an emergency C-section. So it's considered emergency now. They can't give me a spinal block. I've already had the needle in my back. So then they just pump more. Um, and so the option is, you know, use, use the epidural that I've already had or they can knock me out completely. So they put me on the table and like, basically it's not a flat table. You are like, like this, like your belly is up in the air because they've got to get you, you know, uncurved so they can cut you open. And so you're already like super uncomfortable, but they start poking me, poking me in the leg and they're like pinching me. It hurt. And they're like, can you feel this? I'm like, I can feel it. And they're like, can you feel this? And I'm like, I can feel it. And they're like, well, we've got to start. And they cut me open. I could feel the blood pouring out of me. I could feel them cutting me open and I'm like screaming, I can feel it, I can feel it. And the anesthesiologist says, you know, you're gonna have to calm down or we're gonna have to put you out. And so they didn't put me out, but I blacked out completely. Like I don't, I don't remember them telling, showing me my baby. I don't remember, you know, meeting her for the first time. And it was just very hard. And I am very, 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 very grateful that she is as healthy as she is and that there were no complications and that, you know, it just, I mourned it for a long time. I would hear about people having vaginal births and like find myself being sad. And I heard so many people saying, at least you're healthy and at least the baby's healthy. And yes, that is so true. Nothing is more true. But also if you're a C-section mama that was hoping for a vaginal birth, it is okay to mourn that you didn't get the birth that you, you know, so hoped for, especially if it's going to feel like, you know, no, it changes things. It's okay to be sad. It really is. Like you don't have to fuck up and get through everything like right away. It is okay to be sad. And you know, I'm telling you this seven years later, it's just like, oh. so yeah, the next thing I remember after my C-section is once again, TMI, but one of those like head nurses, uh, I guess a lactation consultant being like, holding the baby to my breast being like feed the baby like that's my first memory feed the baby and so like I had blacked out that whole time I was awake I was talking to people I don't remember any of it and like that's just so sad so that was my birth experience with my first that is why I have you know unmedicated births because I do not want to go through that again and I'm going to do everything I can to not and I think what started it was my water has been, been like leaking because now I had an infection. So my body's not going to produce like what it needs to push out a baby with the uterus. Like it's going to be a weaker uterus since I'm sick and it's not going to have the energy to, you know, get the baby out of me. And I'm not going to have the energy to push adequately. And then I get this epidural that also makes it so I can't feel really what I'm doing. And it just like complicated so many things. And so now I'm this like huge advocate for VBAX and like, it's just so hard, so hard seeing moms say, you know, like I had a C-section so I can't do vaginal births anymore because that's most likely what your doctors told you and you just gotta, you gotta really look into it. So when I got out of the hospital, I waited maybe a month and then I started calling around and I couldn't find anybody near me that would even attempt a VBAC because it can't just be one doctor in a practice. It has to be the entire practice like willing to deliver you vaginally. So that was really hard. Now I did end up finding a, a wonderful, wonderful doctor down at the medical center and she's no longer there. She left during the pandemic and I don't know like what happened with her, but I was in, I was already doing like home births when she left, but I had two more babies vaginally in the hospital and those were both uh the houston medical center and you know this doctor told me i was like how long are you going to be here because i would love the opportunity to have many children and i don't want to change doctors again and she was like you know that's all great and she's like and i have big hands i'll reach in and i'll turn the baby for you like we're not going to give you a c-section just because we can and she was just the best doctor and of course she wasn't there for either of the births of my babies and both of them were just so much better than the c-section so much better so i ended up finding them and so like that's why i've gotten to the point of like crazy lady that has home births because i've had births at hospitals and they're wonderful but then they're doing interventions that i'm not necessarily in agreement with so from that point on i knew like if i want to advocate for my babies i'm going to have to do that and so how i do that is at home 
And like I said, like home birth is not for everybody. It has to be like the perfect circumstances. I went to see my midwife today for the twins and I was telling her like how grateful I was that the babies were in separate sacks. And she's like, oh yeah, no question about it because we wouldn't do it if the babies were sharing a sack. There's just too many dangers. So that also brings like this peace and calm over me knowing like my midwife knows she has limits. She knows that like she's not going to risk my health and the baby's health by like delivering babies that, you know, things could go terribly wrong. So it's, it's just so great, like, that I have made it to where I am. And I hate that I didn't know all the things I know now back when I was a first time mom. And so like, as if you're a first time mom watching this, I hope that this video encourages you to do your research. And Isadora will be seven very soon and we will have seven kids, seven and under this year. We are so excited, so blessed. And it's just so hard seeing that I have a seven year old, she is, so grown up and it's hard to believe oh she's just a beautiful girl I wish I wish I could like hold her here right now but it's bedtime for all the kids <laughs> I always like to like hold the kids in the videos um and she's just she's just a big love bug like she she loves touch I think that's her um love language is touch she'll just come up and like rest her head on you or like want to cuddle with you and she is just the sweetest girl and I love her so much guys I'm a mess it's it's the twin hormones I don't cry I am not a crier um <laughs> but yes I'm very grateful that she's one that made me a mama that she's the one that taught me how to that I do need to stand up for my children and I do need to stand up for myself and that I need to you know speak up because no one's gonna care for me and my children like I will and so I really hope that this video was somewhat enjoyable to you, a little bit entertaining and uh, not too scary. Don't be scared of having children. Don't be scared of what it will take to have a baby because it is worth it. The moment like it happens, it's worth it. Every second was worth it. I would have, I would have a hundred more C-sections if it meant that I got to have my daughter. And so, yep, that's it. <laughs> I'm just gonna cry more if I stay on any longer. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a blessed rest of your week and I can't wait to see you guys soon. Bye, guys.